Hello and welcome to the second edition of the Audio Heads. Today we're going to be reviewing the Sapphire and Steel Audio by Big Finish, The Passenger. I'm joined by some wonderful people. So first of all, let's go to Lee Wilson. Cheers for that, Connor. Um, back in 2005, when it was announced they were going to be doing Sapphire and Steel Audios, I thought, brilliant. I, yeah, I was over the moon because it was one of my favourite TV shows. But then, how dare they replace David McCallum and Joanna Lumley with two new, two different actors, David Warner and uh, what's her face, Susanna Harker. But um, I was so annoyed when I heard the news about this. Um, but as soon as I played the audio, within, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of the audio, it was Saffron Steel for me. It, they did a bang on job. Um, David McCallum and Jonah Lumley will always be for me Saffron Steel, the TV. But the audios, these two, they nailed it. Um, they got the characters right. You know, the icy coldness of steel and, you know, the, the warmness of Sapphire. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant characterizations. And, you know, big thumbs up to the two actors doing that, you know, because. It is a big, big thing to take up, you know, take over a role what, what someone else has made very, very successful. Um, as for the story, the passenger, very good, very good. It was um, like a, a ghost, a ghost story on a train, shall we say? Um, it's it's all down to a book and one man's um, hot grief and you know his past haunting him. Um, it's just brilliantly, brilliantly played out. Um, the, you know the sporting cast is just awesome all these the spirits and that lot but my big thumbs up really goes to Hugo Mayer for Mr. Be you know Philip Burgess the, the main character you know passenger what uh, he just played the part just awesome he, he, he was there you could feel his grief when he was remembering his past of what he'd done and 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 with and as, also we have gold as well played by Mark Gatiss which is a brilliant characterization. We never got gold in the TV series, but we got it in the audios. And the way gold was playing, playing Mr. Burgess to bring him out, and it was just brilliant. Um, it, yeah, it's it's a very very good story. Um, it's very atmospheric. You can you know the, the sound effects is just there. You, you you can feel it that you're on a train, an old steamer, steam chuffy train. Um, it's an excellent story to start off a new. You know, new season for Saffron Steel, and for me, I'm not going to score it as high because I know as further along the, the line, there are better stories. So for me, this does get um, a seven point five. So a seven point five from Lee. What does Graham have to say about this? Oh, <clears throat> cheers, Connor, for that marvelous introduction. Um, well. Unlike Lee, um, as I alluded to you guys over there, um, I didn't really watch this back in the day or in reruns. I, I kind of dabbled in and out. So, but listening to this has given me the inkling to go back and maybe check out some of the TV stories. Um, and when an audio can do that, uh, when you don't have an idea of the backstory, it's done a bang up job. Um, like Lee alluded to, I dare say that there were hardcore fans who were aghast with dismay when. Um, you know, David Warner and Suzanne Hark. Uh, what's your surname again? Sorry, I keep forgetting that. Harkins? Harker. Harkins. Harker. 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 Yeah, yeah, there you go. See, show you how much of a non buff I am. Uh, when they took care of the role, obviously, for uh, Joanna Longley and David. Help? Cold it. There you go. What he McCallum. said. McCallum, there you go. Yeah, I told you I wasn't well versed in this. Um, yeah, so when they, when they, obviously when they take out the role, there's going to be trepidation, there's going to be some anxiety. But as Lee alluded to, um, for me coming into this as a new listener, absolutely fantastic portrayal. I love the atmosphere, I love the spookiness of the, the whole thing, and I love the whole concept of the Who Done It book, whereby everybody on the train has got a corresponding character within the, the pages of the book. I thought that was nicely done. Mark Gatiss is gold. Absolutely phenomenal and his manipulative out on his own agenda just to basically get the job done. And it's a story that perfectly demonstrates in the case of Mr. Burgess that how, as uh, as Tim has told me, when it comes to a lot of these stories, how time is the enemy. Uh, you know, and how that at the end of the day, 
you know, it can't always be rewritten, but at the same time, it's the bad guy here. So very, very enjoyable for me, not being well versed in this in this genre. And I'm going to go check out the TV series. First listen, great stuff. And for me, I'll give this an 8.5 out of 10. So an impressive 8.5 from Graham. All the way to Texas now. What does Texas team have to say about this? Well, I'd agree with both of these gentlemen, except that um, I, I wasn't aware... Uh, I came to these after the fact. I'd already seen the TV series back in the 90s whenever I got the, the VHSs of them from the UK. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't um, disappointed at all with the casting of, of these two and the leads because I think, I think like Lee said, they, they really do inhabit the parts. They play the parts as they were played on television. And since they're both top-notch actors, you don't really, you don't really miss David McCallum or Joanna Lumley. I mean, because... They, it works. It works very well. This is a very good audio. Uh, it's um, everything's perfect. I mean, the sound design, the music, uh, the actors. It's um, you might think it was a little bit too long, but I wouldn't think so. It's it's under two hours, so it 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 works. Um, it's a great story, um, too. Time like on the TV series, is a vengeful creature that is always looking for some way to break into the universe and wreak havoc. And that's what it attempts to do here, using the bitterness or the resentment of, of, of dead people. And so it's not really a ghost story. It's just, um, it's, 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 it's hard to get your head around sometimes. That's what I love about this series is that they don't really give you much. You just have to listen to it and find out. Same thing with the TV series. They don't, they don't give you anything. You just have to watch and pick up the clues and see what's going on. That, that's really good. It's really challenging to do. But uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little more generous with my rating. I think this one deserves a 10 because it really is that good. I can't find much to fault with it at all. Uh, this is probably the third time I've listened to it, and I think it's pretty much an, a perfect audio story. So that's what I'm going to give it a 10. So a golden 10 out of 10. What does Beef Dad have to say about this audio? Well, um, Joe Lumley uh, just simply did not want to revisit the part. That's why she didn't do it. Um, I believe her cohort um, had other things that he was doing at the time, so he was unable to do it. Um, I think David Warner captured the coldness brilliantly. Um, but Susanna Harker, I don't know, there was, there was a little bit of warmth in the voice um, that Joe Lumley had that was missing. Um, but the thing is, what Steve, uh, Lee said atmosphere, yes, yes, atmosphere was created. Um, but the thing is, the whole thing about this is it was story led. Whereas the um, television series tended to rely very, very much on creating atmospheres. Um, excellent story, superb performances. Um, not just Sapphire, Steel and Gold. Um, Hugo Might's already been mentioned um, as Philip Burgess. Um, wonderfully tortured performance in the last episode. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And nobody has mentioned Mrs. Warburton. Mrs. Warburton is an elderly lady and she is a vengeful old bag. And the Jackie Scarvellis, brilliant, brilliant performance. It was so, so good, so, so intense. Um, and of course, the princess, the princess, um, Claire Louise Connolly, she was very, very good. Um, and John Andrews, the soldier. And all these people coming from different periods and all together on the train, brought together by time to basically. Um, torture the hell out of Philip Burgess um, successfully. And it, it was it was absolutely excellent. Um, as I say, story led, brilliant, but atmosphere created, super. 
Um, the two leads, Sapphire and Steel, yes, but slight reservations um, on Sapphire. But David Warner, Steel, superb. Um, Mark Gatiss as gold. Well, one wonderfully, wonderfully, um, a real mind player. Um, very, very, very cleverly done. Um, cleverly written and beautifully performed. Um, so, yeah, for me, I can't give it a 10 because, as I say, I'm missing some of the warmth of Lumley. Um, but, no, it, it'll get a good, solid 9 from me. Hmm. One piece of that beef, Dad. And over to Susan. What's Susan's verdict on this? Um, I was really, I was thrown. It, it, it like when I first when I first started watching and listening to to uh, Sapphire and Steel, I didn't know what to think. Of. I I hadn't I didn't have the the insight. The time was the enemy. I just thought that everything was after you. Like every single thing could have been, uh, you know the the enemy, the, the, the antagonist in the story, <clears throat> that train seemed to be an antagonist when, 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 when it first, when the, the ep episode first started, there was, uh, there were different cars from different periods. There were different people in different cars from different periods. The people would, the, the, where they were in the cars seemed to have something to do with like what was going on and yes it was it, it, it ended up being that that it was about torturing torturing the the, the soldier and so so like he, you know Burgess really uh, you know he really brought that that uh, forth and then there was then there was the I never I never uh, expected a gold in this I was I was like what who's this gold guy and like then I was like I, I had to re-listen to the very beginning of it where um, where the, the no no I, I'm sorry I didn't have to listen to the very beginning again um, when the next episode came up that that beginning portion explained that there was other that there were heavier elements and that the that the middle elements were the ones that that were uh were dispatched and so sapphire and steel had been dis dispatched and so that was that was interesting like the, de the deployment of of someone else out of this out of this um strange elemental uh group of of super beings and and so that was interesting and then there was uh, the the fact that I love trains and the fact that this that this whole thing was back and forth in different cars on a train instead of just in one car or just in one uh, just one each each person staying to their own zone in the train it was interesting it was really cool and um, the the other thing that was really interesting about the the episode was that there was there was a uh an innocence when princess was in, introduced but then there was all this you know yuck that that everybody else had 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 experienced that, that was coming up and 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 the when uh in the fourth episode or in the fourth part of the serial when uh they discovered that it was that it was that none of these people were alive it was like a, a kind of a flash for me because um you know i've seen a lot of different things to the sixth sense where all of a sudden here is this burgess and this train full of you know i see dead people it was it was like uh, kind of a uh, it captured that especially being as eerie as it was I mean Sapphire and Steel is a very eerie program to begin with but this passenger story was very eerie it had, it had 
really creepy and eerie things happening all the time and so i i'm 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 pleased with this and I, i'll give it i'll give it a nine i i was really it was really eerie and and yeah thanks connor yeah so my thoughts on this um it was a really good sort of ghost story. I thought it was it was quite different from what I've seen in uh, in other programs before. So I was happy that it was at least something sort of new, and they weren't recycling old ideas. Um, David Warner and uh, Susanna Harker as Sapphire and Steel, I thought they moulded the role so well. Um, I thought that um, because I haven't only seen one entire assignment of Sapphire and Steel before, which we reviewed on this channel. I noticed with Sapphire that she seems to be a bit more keyed in with human life now. Um, whereas, and she's probably also able to stand up to Steele's demeanor and his, uh, his sort of more grumpy, um, commanding attitude now. Um, so I think, uh, there's a great sort of character development from the beginning to this point, um, for Sapphire's character in particular. I don't think Susanna Hark is as good as uh, Joanna Lumley, but I still think that she does a great job. Um, yeah, I think Mr. Burgess was a great character, sort of that haunted, tortured sort of person that was uh, that the audio was named after. Was uh, yeah, it was a sensationally uh, acted performance. I thought um, Mrs. Warburton again, uh, you know, very funny role um, when she got shot. I, I was uh, I thought that was a very funny scene. Uh, to listen to. Um, I think uh, Mark Gatiss really owned this uh, with uh, Gold. I'm not really always keen on his acting um, in Sherlock and also in Doctor Who at some point, but I think here he's re he really suits the audio well um, and he just uh, sort of the arsy, arrogant um, Gold was, uh, yeah, he was so superb, I thought. Um, other than that, I thought uh, the thought that the story was really good. Um, so I think I, overall, I'll probably give this a seven out of ten. So I'm going to open up the floor to whoever wants to say anything up for that. With that yeah. I have a question for the group. Uh, did, you not, did you not find the ending kind of amb ambiguous? Mm. Uh, yeah. You what mm. is it that actually happens to the the character the passenger because it seems like the story's over sapphire and steel are gone to get, do whatever it is they do mm -hmm. and, and gold returns and so is he there to do something uh, untoward and do a little bit of cleanup or is he just is it just he just still hanging around because he's gold i me me personally i thought gold turned up to stop mr bear just getting on the train again oh yeah because it gave him the it, okay. Yeah, it went. It went back to the beginning. He was on the same platform. He was waiting for you know the train was late, so yeah. I think he I think he turned up just to turn him round and push him in another direction. Oh, good good idea then. Yeah, yeah but that makes sense. And and that and that in that instance that's fine. Um, but I can see how Tim may have got confused there as well. I did I did to begin with until I remembered that uh, he mentioned the oh a taxi service that so you know he was uh, uh Turn left rather than turning right, you know. One of the ones. Some other, and some other stories. Um, it, it's not always good for the people they're trying to help. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was just wondering as well, listening to it. I wonder if they wasn't allowed to mention the, ti the title of the book because it was quite obvious it was the murder on the Orange Express. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, but they, they never mentioned it once. So I don't know whether the. Agatha Christie estate wouldn't allow him to use the title. I don't know. But, um, I think the title's irrelevant, though, isn't it? Because the, the yeah. book is changing anyway. They infer that that's, that's what it is. But I mean, the, mm. the book, part of the story is that the book keeps changing once our characters get involved in it. So mm. it's, uh, I, I liked, I like, I did like that idea of the, the, the characters in this story would play in the characters on Murder yeah. of the Orange Express. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, that was quite quite well written. That and I, I have a question regarding gold. The, the the bit when they get done in by the the so-called conductor, which which never they sees, and then she's mm -hmm. going to turn back to page one to basically begin the rejuvenation process, so we can get rid of the book. I was a bit confused by that segment. Did anybody else get that, or was it just a case of? Uh, well, it, 
if 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 you, if and when you get into watching the TV series, you mm-hmm. realise that Sapphire Sapphire can turn back time for so long. Okay, right. You can turn back time, so that's what she, she went back to page one. No, so that, that much I go. That much I go. I just, I just didn't quite get how that enabled him to escape the book. Um, I, 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 he, yeah, because he he was he was free before page one. Right. So okay. he was trapped up to then. It's a bit confusing, I know. But it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like I said, that's one of the things they never really explain about the characters is what they can or can't do. They you just have to pay attention and, and to what they're saying because a lot yeah. of times, a lot of times she'll ask Sapphire to take back time in some episodes of the audios and the TV series. And that's her ability that she's he's more of a brute force kind of guy because he's still. Mm-hmm. I love the way he just he, he goes to that cabin where all those people are starting to change, and, and he just breaks his way in because uh, they've got him locked out because that's. <laughs> can do mm. and also as well as Susan said she thought Susan thought this one was eerie I've got to say if you go down the line of the other audios they get even more eerier mm. and darker and and you meet and you meet more people from Saffron Steel's race mm. yes mm. Silver so, yeah, so, uh, silver not, not, not to potentially spoil anything but I don't have a bit of digging with regards to future audios um I don't know if everybody's heard the full range, but um, is it, what's, what's, what's the deal with the one where there's a couple of Aussies them for one story? Oh yeah, <laughs> they remember. Uh, there's there's a story where they're replaced by a couple of loud Australians. Ah mm-hmm. uh, yes, yeah. Well, that that was season three, Four. the first one. Yeah, three, three, three. Yeah, yeah season well, three. Well, well, they couldn't get Warner and Femi in for recording that day, so they just said, "I'll bugger it." We got a couple of Aussies in for one story. Well, well, yeah. apparently, season two was supposed to have been the last, ah. and the end, and the ended it. Uh, but they've had to sort of think up an idea of how to bring them back because it was so popular. They did one more season, mm-hmm. and because the, the last story in season two was supposed to be the final ones, and it sort of ended. All right, well, that's fine. I'll, 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 I'll get to those. Final. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just qualifying that. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you continue with the range, you'll you'll get um, uh, Lisa Bowerman as um, as Ruby. Ru- she Ruby, comes yeah. Times. And right. you'll also get um, what is his name? The place David over Collins, uh, David Collins. David Collins. Yes, David he, Collins, he's, yeah. he's the only actor they got in from the TV series, I believe. To to yeah. To his role from he television. was over on TV, was he? Okay. Yes. Very, very it's, a shame they didn't, it's a shame they didn't get lead then. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, but I led, love lead. Yeah, Val, Val Pringle died in 1999. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh, yeah. Shame, yeah. yeah. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant voice, that man. Anyone else? Uh, just to basically touch upon David Warner again, is still when poor Mr. Burgess has gone through his hysteria. You know, it's, it's, it's a case of, look, I don't hear that sassy confused I say that shut up, concentrate and listen to my voice. Mm. I just thought that would, you know, answer the question, Mr. Burgess. You know, like, wow, what? <laughs> it's the language, you know. You you know. You got, you've, got, you've got to admit, David Warner is a damn good actor and he's been around for a hell of a long time. Mm. Yeah. So and, and, and he has been in some very, very cult classic <laughs> movies. Mm. Thumbs up to Mr. Warner. And yes, Ed, Ed won't roll on like the omen. I mean, he's actually older than me. Well, there you go. <laughs> that can't be right. That can't be right. Get your yeah. calculator out. Yeah. He's, um, he's, let's see, he's born in 1941. He's 74, I believe. 74. Oh, yeah, that would make him 74, yeah. yeah. No, 75. Well, some there's not his birthday this year, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah 75, 75th birthday this year, yeah. Well, what can you do? <laughs> I don't know, what? You can drink, the good health, and all the rest of it. Oh, yeah. You can, well. you, can listen, you can listen to another audio and give it a thumbs up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, stale stuff all around. Mm. Any more, any more? No. I'm spent. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll cut it off there then. Uh, mm-hmm. As always, um, yeah. So like, subscribe, um, and join us on all our Facebook and Twitter groups. Uh, there's loads of discussion going on there, so I definitely encourage 
to get involved on social media with us. Um, well, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, and we'll see you next time.